Good morning, friends and family. You're watching God's Motivation Morning Broadcast. Pastor Wayne Carey here. It's a blessing. We are privileged to be able to come and to share the Word of God with you. And so on behalf of my beautiful wife, Shanice, we take this time to welcome you. And again, thank you for joining us. Let us go before the throne of God. Father, we thank you for your love, for your grace, your loving kindness, O oh God, towards us. That is better than life, O oh God. We thank you for being Jehovah Rohi, the Lord who is our shepherd who leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall fear no evil, for you are with us. Your rod and your staff, they do comfort us, Father. We bless you today. We thank you for supplying all of our needs according to your riches that is in glory, Father. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for being God. And beside you, there is no one else, O oh God. And so this morning, myself and Janice, oh God, we ask your blessings, your favor upon your people, God. We ask of you that you would work a supernatural work in their lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Prove yourself, manifest yourself to your people everywhere, Lord God. We touch and we agree this morning. We give you all the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, David declares, I'll bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continuously be in my mouth. And so we are again grateful uh, that we can come and share the word of God with you this morning. We've been talking about the 12 laws of, of fatherhood, 12 laws of fatherhood. And, and uh, we've given you the first, first, set, first and the second part. And we're going to move right into the third part of what we're going to talk to you today about. And so we're going to give you three other laws. One is uh, the law of restraint. We're going to look at the law uh, of punish or the law to punish. And then we're going to look at chasten, chasten. All right. And so let's look at it. Uh, we're going to take it from 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 13. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 13, um, Samuel worked in the temple. And as Samuel was a boy, a little boy, young boy in the temple, uh, God spoke to Samuel. God called Samuel and so what Samuel did Samuel was not familiar with the voice of God not being familiar with the voice of God this is what he did he went to the priest Eli and he asked Eli did you call me and so Eli said no I didn't call you so he went back and then he heard the voice again Samuel so he goes back to Eli the priest and says did you call me and then he went back and so when he when he went to Eli again the priest and asked him did you call me? Then the priest understood that it was the Lord uh, wanting to get Samuel's attention. And he said, when you hear, just say, Lord, here I am. And so what Samuel did when he heard, when, when God called Samuel once again, he, he said, here I am. And God began to speak to Samuel and told Samuel about um, his life and told Samuel about what he wants to do in the life of Eli and his sons. And so this year in the verse, um, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 13, the Bible says, For I told him, for I told him that I would judge his family forever. This is what God's saying now to, to Samuel, and he had to relay this message to Eli. And so, for I told him that I would judge his family forever. Here it is, because of the sin he knew about. Because of the sin he knew about, it says his his sons made themselves contemptible, meaning they made themselves vile in the in the King James Version, and he failed to restrain them. And so this is the importance of the father. When we speak of the uh, the twelve laws of fatherhood, this is the law, the law of his, or, or the law as fathers for us to give our our children. This law is the law of restraint. Now, Eli as the priest. His sons, they became vile. They were, they were, they were responsible for, for, uh, for taking care and joining Eli and working in the temple. But Eli was, he, he put a blind eye to exactly what the children was doing. He knew of it, but he never addressed it. And so the Bible says that God said, I, ju I will judge his family forever because here it is the sin he knew about. And so as a father, you knowing a sin that your children that they involve in that is not pleasing to God and you are you're having a blind eye to it, you are failing to address it. You are failing to uh, uh, restrain them from it or speaking along those lines. 
and he says and his sons made themselves contemptible before God this is really what would happen you if you don't restrain your children you would cause your children to become vile or contemptible before God because simply because he, you fail to restrain them and this is what the first law today that we want to share with you when it comes to um, uh, the law the, the, the 12 laws of fatherhood this is one of the laws here the laws in our third session our third part the first law is the law of restraint so as a father in particularly the father you have to restrain you have to say to your children and restrain them and because if you fail to restrain them you'll find their actions become contemptible before God and that's not what you want so we as fathers we cannot fail to restrain our children so we go into the second law the second law is Deuteronomy chapter chapter 21 verses 18 Deuteronomy chapter 21 verses 18 to 20 Deuteronomy chapter 21 verses 18 to 21 and it reads it says if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son if a man has a stubborn and a rebellious son and it says if a man has a stubborn and rebellious son which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother and that when they have chased when they have chastened him will not hearken unto them here it is then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out into the elders of the city and unto the gate of his place and they shall say unto the elders of his city this is our son this is our son this our son is stubborn and he is rebellious he will not obey our voice he is a glutton and a drunkard verse 21 says and all the men of the city shall stone him with stones that he die so shall thou put every so shall thou put evil away from among you and all Israel shall hear and fear now this is this is very drastic when he's talking about how they stone but this is how it was in the in the Old Testament but we're speaking of of punishment so let's look at this now we would not go to this extent to stone um, our children in this day but that's how serious they were about getting the getting those kids to change their way and so there has to be some level of punishment when our kids has has done something that is contrary to the laws of God or, or, or some order that you put in place and and you find them over and over repeatedly they just breaking it they kind of just don't care what you have to say and you are not punishing them you're not you're not disciplining them along those lines and this can hinder those kids from becoming and developing into mature positive young men and so it's very important for us to punish we don't want to go to this extreme uh, but we definitely have to uh, give some level of punishment to our children this is very important so the first one we got to restrain them as fathers the law we have to restrain them and secondly we want to punish them for when they have done something that is contrary to exactly what you have ordered them to do we we are teaching them to be productive and teaching them uh, you know for them to not just listen to you in the terms of uh, listening or hearing what you have to say as a father but with them being obedient to you as a father and so the second law that the the third law that we'll be looking at is is um, the law when it comes down to chastening and so we look at Hebrews chapter 12 Hebrews chapter 12 verse 7 uh, this is what the Bible says I'll, I'll read it in the in the King James version of the Bible the King James version says verses 12 verses verses 7 it says if you endure chastening here it is now if you endure chastening if you endure chastening God deal it with you as with sons here it is now if you endure chastening God deal it with you as sons here's what it says for what son is he whom the father chasten it not let's go to verse 8 it says but if you be without chastement or chastisement whereof all are partakers then you are bastards and not sons and so I like how it also says in the in the NIV I'll read it in the NIV so that we can better understand it it says endure hardship as as discipline or chastening it says God is treating you as sons for what son is not disciplined by his father verses 8 it says if you are not disciplined 
and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. And so this is what fathers would do who love their children. They would chastise them. And this is what it says, because if you don't chastise them, they are like illegitimate children. This is what the Bible says, and not true sons. So if you, as a father, you love your children, you consider them to be true sons, true daughters. There has to be where that as a father, when there is time for them to be chastised, then you do that. Because the Bible says this is what God himself, that he chastised us because he loves us. And this is what God would do. If he doesn't do it, then we ourselves, he treats us like we're illegitimate. And so today the word has come to you today as, as, as fathers for us to restrain our children, not to be like Eli the priest who looked away from his kids doing what they were doing and he did not address them. He did not restrain them. And so they were contemptible before God, before your kids were to be vile or contemptible before God. Uh, uh, discipline yourself as the father to restrain your children from their actions, especially when their actions is vile, can become vile toward God. Secondly, you want to punish. We don't want to go to the drastic of stoning, but there are some level of punishment that we, as fathers, that we can say, this is what my son or my daughter deserves. And so we do that and we're punishing. Again, it's in love and we're doing it. And secondly, thirdly, we're talking about chastise, chastisement chastising and your hardship discipline and says God is treating you as son so when we find ourselves being chastised in love he is showing us that he loves us and so it's the same thing that we can convey to our children we love them but at the same time too we love them that much that we would chastise them because we are saying that you are my son you're my daughter this is what it's about for what son is not disciplined by his father so if a son is not disciplined by his father then uh, that son most likely is going to can, you know, can, can end up being a corrupt son or, or you can have actually corrupt children if you want to put it that way. So if you are not, if you are not disciplined and everyone goes, goes, undergoes discipline, then you are illegitimate children and not true sons. And so God wants you not to, he wants you to father your children not as illegitimate but as being true sons and you take them you chastise them when you know when it's time for them to do that but you're doing it in love let us pray father in jesus name we thank you god for your word today we thank you god for developing us oh god into being men into being men of standard into being men god who would who would who would stand oh god as as leaders in their families oh god and that we ourselves would represent you as fathers in the earth of God and that we would show our children father God the way that you had fathered us that we ourselves can father our children so we ask you for grace we ask you for your mercy O oh God to carry out the laws of oh God so that we can have better households and we can raise children God that would honor you so we bless you today father we pray for those persons who may not know Jesus who may not know you as the Lord and personal Savior that they will accept you into their hearts O oh God so we give you the praise we give you the glory and we thank you this morning God for this time of fellowship in Jesus name amen and amen praise the Lord well again we are grateful thank God uh, for you again we want to remind you to like to share and subscribe to the channel if you have, no, uh, have not already uh, subscribed we'll see you in our next session have a great day everybody be blessed